Good evening. My name is Ms. Velasco, and along with Ms. Ebner, I serve as an advisor to the Fairlawn Chapter of the National Honor Society. We welcome all joining us tonight, family, friends, Mr. Norcia, members of the board, faculty, staff, and other community members. This evening's ceremony is a little bit different from other years, but we are excited to be able to gather in this virtual space to celebrate our newest members. For members inducted last spring or many springs ago, we hope that this evening will serve to remind you of the standards of excellence you too are charged with maintaining as lifelong members of the nation's oldest, largest, and most prestigious student recognition program. Membership in the Virginia Nassasoff Clark chapter of the National Honor Society has been earned by these candidates through the effective demonstration of the four qualities that serve as standards for the society. Our chapter leadership will now review these qualities for the candidates. We begin with a review of history of the organization nationally and locally by Ms. Ebner. This evening, I will be sharing with you a reflection of a former member of the Fairlawn High School National Honor Society on history. How did National Honor Society become what it is today? In the world today, there are over 1 million members of the National Honor Society. They come from everywhere, places like Toronto, Honolulu, Los Angeles, and of course, Fairlawn. They work in just about every single industry. They are your teachers and your principals. They are the Tina Fays of comedy, the Katie Couric's of journalism, and the Cal Ripken Juniors of baseball, all of whom are members of the National Honor Society. The organization's influence transcends our own chapter and operates on a global scale but this wasn't always the case. Let's go on a quick trip back in time to the year 1921. Most of us, having not lived then, are probably unfamiliar with what that time period had to show. So I'll set the scene. The United States and Germany have just signed the Treaty of Berlin, ending World War I. Wonder Bread has just began distribution. And local high school honor societies are gaining steam across the country. Somewhere in Pittsburgh, the Fifth Avenue High School principal, Dr. Dr. Edward Reinerson, is pondering the benefits of having future generations of Fair Lawn High School students vying to complete Google Forms as soon as possible for service project requests as they are filled on a first come first serve basis. Okay, so this wasn't really his intention. Dr. Reinerson simply wanted students everywhere from all walks of life to come together in their commitment to scholarship, community, service, character, and leadership. So with the help of hundreds of his colleagues from the National Association of Secondary School Principals, Dr. Reinerson founded the National Honor Society, organizing the first chapter at his own high school. As it turns out, a lot of students resonated with Dr. Reinerson's idea. In less than 10 years, 1,000 National Honor Society chapters were founded. Along the way, a constitution detailing policy and procedure was written. The first blue and gold torch was chosen as the logo and noblesse oblige, French for nobility obligates became the official motto. Fast forward 100 years later, and here we are at the 2021 induction ceremony of Fair Lawn High School's chapter of the National Honor Society. Although, although a century has passed since Dr. Reinerson's idea was first brought to life, his goals are still be carrying, carried out by young adults everywhere by a means of character, service, leadership, and scholarship. I will now light a candle for history.
hope you're doing all doing well and are excited to be the future Freelon's chapter of National Honor Society. I'm Elaine, the Vice President, and I'm going to be talking about the importance of the scholarship pillar. Evaluating applicants requires a review of their GPA, a number that can focus on a whole array of factors, such as, but not limited to, willingness to learn, tendency to overthink, and how much or how little time you spend procrastinating. A number like that is part of what brought you all here today, a collective effort at some of the school's highest achievers. And everyone here should be proud of the effort it has taken for all of us to maintain the motivation to do well academically, even when at times over the past year, it's been difficult. Balancing school, homework, extracurriculars, family responsibilities, and yelling at your siblings or parents to be quiet during your third online test of the day isn't easy, but you've shown that it's possible. And while scholarship mostly focuses on grades, they're not its only measure. What leads many of us to find academic success in the first place is a willingness to seek out and rise to any challenge. Some of our members are spending their Saturday nights working on their novel, starting new clubs to engage students in STEM or reading math textbooks um, just for fun. I'm sorry, is it difficult to hear me? Um, okay. I hope that all of us carry these values with us as we finish our high school years and for the rest of our lives. And so I congratulate you on your accomplishments and hope that you can, in the spirit of the National Honor Society, rise to the challenge. I will now light a candle for scholarship. Hello everyone. My name is Isabella Tardio and I'm the treasurer of the Fairland High School chapter of the National Honor Society. To be considered as a candidate, a student must model the six pillars of character, trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and citizenship. When you tell someone that you're part of the society, you automatically paint a picture in their minds about the type of person you are, intelligent, organized, dependable, with integrity. We strive to be positive role models, inside and outside of the classroom. We go out of our way to help a classmate understand a lesson. We volunteer to aid the teacher during class when they need extra help. More importantly, we strive to support, uh, support others rather than solely thinking about ourselves. Each and every member works daily to embody these principles that all people should aspire to replicate. Not to be cliche, but each and every member here should believe that it's not what you do when someone's watching you, it's what you do when someone isn't watching you that matters. Thank you and congratulations to all of our new inductees. I will now light a candle for character. Good evening. My name is Numano Asim and I'm the secretary of our chapter. Let me begin tonight by offering my congratulations to the inductees and parents attending this special night. Tonight, we celebrate the desire to serve. Being kind and having the ability to truly serve our fellow man, I believe is something we must do with absolutely no expectation of receiving anything in return. I find it valuable in every human being. There is no progress without giving back. I always tell myself that intelligence and success only follow after a person humbles themselves and treats others with humanity. In fact, during the first two months of the pandemic, supplies in stores reached a low quantity due to higher demand. This included gloves, Lysol wipes, toilet paper, hand sanitizer, and most importantly, masks. My family had decided to make homemade reusable masks with filters for our own use. This way, we could use and reuse our masks as many times as needed since we didn't know how long the pandemic would persist. One day, my aunt visited the hospital and upon further conversation with the nursing staff, learned that nurses were being charged $10 per mask for homemade masks. My aunt, also a resident of Fairlawn, told this news to my mother and I. The three of us used sewing machines in our home to make over 800 masks over the next several weeks to distribute to nurses in local hospitals, local clinics, and to the volunteer staff who distributed lunches to Fairlawn students over the quarantine. We worked with material in our own homes and bought elastic. We cut, measured, and sewed these masks with compassion in our hearts. These times were troubling already. There was no need to add the concept of taking advantage of one another's wallets at the same time. My family was extremely conscious of the fact that people were being laid off. Others were unable to work remotely and those who were able to work remotely 
had to hire extra help in order to be productive in the same environments as their children. As a nation, we have gotten used to wearing masks and social distancing, but there was a special sense of panic in the beginning months of the pandemic. So we used this opportunity to keep ourselves busy as our minds were plenty anxious and we used this chance to relieve any tension that we could for our fair lawn neighbors. My hope for you is that you will cultivate this attitude backed by purpose in your own life. Many see community service as a means to an end. Some might see it as a way to get service points while socializing, while others may view it as an unfortunate and often inconvenient necessity of high school life. But we need to ask ourselves, is that true community service? Are you doing it for the right reasons? I'm not saying there won't be Saturday mornings when you would rather sleep your heart out than paint your heart out. What I'm talking about is that in the end, when it is all done and you are once again well rested, you can look back and realize that you did something worthwhile, that you helped your fellow man in some way. Tonight, you are not being inducted into the National Honor Society for a job well done, but rather for a job well begun. Keep working hard to give yourself unselfishly to others. Thank you, and once again, congratulations. I will now light a candle for service. Hi, everyone. My name is Tammy Cabellao, and I am the president of our chapters as National Honor Society this year. Tonight, I wanted to share some thoughts on living out leadership. To be accepted as an inductee into the society, you have already demonstrated that you have practiced leadership in your lives. However, I've noticed that many people in general are not aware of the many ways that leadership can manifest. When asked to think of a great leader, who would you say? Steve Jobs, Jeff Bezos, LeBron James? All of those are very true. But what about the mailman who works at the post office, who trains new employees to handle all the packages with care? Or the lead cook at a restaurant who teaches their staff to prepare the food with a delicate care and concentration? You see, Leaders are teachers and firefighters and mailmen and cashiers and nurses and many more. Leadership isn't limited to those with just titles either. Over the course of the pandemic, a lot more people have begun to dedicate themselves more to their own interests, whether that be by devoting more time to their hobbies, joining more intriguing clubs, or even by continuing to practice a sport in hope of a season. By merely inviting a friend to join you or encouraging them to follow their what they're interested in, did you know that that is practicing leadership as well? As a National Honor Society member, it is essential to understand that you are joining an organization where leadership is highly valued in its members. Our members strive for academic excellence, create the art on the school walls, lead sports teams to victories, plan fundraisers to support philanthropic causes, maintain integrity, and much more. Our members also take on responsibilities that better their environment and the lives of those around them, while also listening to others' opinions and, be, and being open to compromise. You are all a part of this very same organization now, and I hope that you will continue to look for opportunities to be a leader during your time with us and beyond. Thank you and congratulations to you all. I would now light a candle for leadership. At this time, we invite our principal, Mr. Gorski, to share a few remarks. Thank you, Ms. Velasco. I want to start by congratulating each of you as inductees and current members and all your parents, family, and friends for both taking and supporting the many steps it has taken for you to come this far. I also want to take a moment to shout out your advisors, Ms. Velasco and Ms. Ebner, for working with you to coordinate and putting together this ceremony. It's certainly a ceremony unlike any other in the history of the Fairlawn High School chapter of the National Honor Society, but I really think that you're going to enjoy it and cherish it as it has some really cool features to it. Now back to our students, the star inductees. Each of the officers that spoke before me really said everything beautifully. 
their words were very profound, and they focused on service and character above all other things. Often the conception that since this is an academically based honor society, that that's the most important thing. We do not believe that it is. Each of you here tonight has earned the privilege to be part of the National Honor Society. You were selected based on scholarship and recommended by your teachers based on your character. Those of you who have been members and are graduating have come to learn how much service and leadership are a part of National Honor Society, especially in this most trying year for our community and humankind. And those of you being inducted will have an opportunity to grow through practicing these qualities. Those four components of leadership, service, character, and scholarship were just spoken about by your officers. Weaving them into the reality of your life is an important part of keeping your focus as you take each step forward. The purpose in your steps will be built on small decisions that you make every day. And the perspective you gain with each step will help you evolve into an intelligent, competent, creative, and compassionate citizen of the world. I'm gonna focus on one NHS value and that's character with a quote. CJ Frick wrote a book titled, Be the Person Your Dog Thinks You Are. If you have a pet, you know how much they adore you. They look up to you like you're the center of their world. If you have younger siblings, family members, or friends, it might be the same way. This is because we serve them and we meet all their needs. To lead is to serve. There is somebody or something in your life that is counting on you. There always will be. Your goldfish, your potted plant, your dog. Do your best to serve that being with humility and grace. That is true leadership. Inductees and members, remember the kids you were in the pictures that you're about to see. I know your parents do. There was an essay written by Robert Fulgham titled, All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. Don't worry, I'm not gonna read the essay, but you might like to give it a look. I'll just say that since you're National Honor Society members, we know that your heads are brimming with knowledge and expanding every day. Make sure that your hearts keep up the pace. This would normally be the time that I'd start scouting out the refreshment table for the post-ceremony snacks in the cafeteria. I try to beat Mr. Norcia there as superintendent. He likes to have a snack too. But since he's virtual tonight, thank him for attending. As am I, I'm gonna just have to hit up my own fridge instead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gorski. We appreciate your words. Um, and let's remember that to lead is to serve, right? So we asked our new members to share a little bit about themselves. And the responses were wonderful. They told us about experiences that inspired their service activities, the teachers and classes that impacted their academic achievements, the individuals in their lives that have been models of leadership, personal mottos, and proudest achievements. Tonight, we would like to share these all, but we're just gonna be able to do the highlights.
inductees, it is time for the pledge. So raise your right hands. And you can repeat after me that we won't hear you. I, say your name, pledge myself to uphold the high purposes of the National Honor Society to which I have been selected. I will be true to the principles for which it stands. I will be loyal to my school. I will maintain and encourage high standards of scholarship, leadership, service, and character. Congratulations, inductees. We will now be sharing with you a collection of photos um, for our inductees with pinning. We invited our inductees to share a picture of being pinned by a parent or a close family member. And we are um, sharing with you all of the pictures that we have received. The members of the National Honor Society who were inducted in the spring of 2020. Our officers and advisors, our faculty council and student activities coordinator, thank you for all your assistance in getting prepared for the inductees of this year's class of 2021. And finally, thank you to all the members of the Board of Education and Administration for their support. Thank you for your attendance this evening, um, Mr. Norcia, Superintendent of Schools. I would also like to thank everyone for attending our National Honor Society induction ceremony for the Fairlawn High School chapter, the Virginia Anastasoff chapter of the National Honor Society. Please join me everyone in applauding all of our new members of the National Honor Society. Congratulations to everyone and we look forward to working with all of our new inductees um, this year and next year as well. Thank you for your attendance, everyone.
Have a good evening.